CBS News Miami. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Naja Sherman and welcome to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quick Cast. Let's take a look at today's top stories. Off the top, Broward County Schools is having another meeting. It's on redefining schools and it's going to be a big one. CBS News Miami's Joan Murray has the breakdown. I'm Joe Murray here at the popular Virginia Schumann Young Montessori Elementary School in Broward. It is on the list of the redefining schools and parents are outraged over a proposal to move the program from this school to Bennett Elementary. The parent engagement is absolutely incredible. Students are excited to walk in the door. Teachers are so invested and excited to be here, which is where I think this has hit such a nerve with people because the idea that something so successful and incredible would be taken away or dismantled just doesn't make sense. What do school board members have to say about the proposed change? We'll tell you coming up beginning at 5. Always alerting, always tracking. This is Next Weather. And taking a live look outside, it is a warm and dry day across South Florida, but it looks like we could see some rain. Let's get right out to Next Weather Chief Meteorologist Ivan Cabrera with a look ahead. Oh boy, on a Monday here, a yes. way to start as we check in on conditions outside. 84 degrees with a few clouds. I think we'll have a couple of showers here coming into the picture for tomorrow as well, but then we dry out for the middle part of the week. We'll talk about it as we check in on conditions uh, right now. Look at these little showers coming on the breeze there, about to make a a beeline there for the northeastern part of Dade, and that continues as we head through tonight. But generally, the bulk of the action will be to our west because that is where the sea breezes are colliding at the east wind and then a west wind coming in from the Gulf, and that's what's really going to fire up the showers and thunderstorms. I think we'll see that again for tomorrow with a little more coverage for us, but only about 20%. And then, yes, this is going to be a huge deal. The hottest temperatures of the year are coming. We're looking at mid 90s for high temperatures. The feels like temperatures likely into the triple digits for the first time this year, so we'll get ready for that. And the rain is not going to help us out because there won't be any for that. And then heading into Mother's Day weekend, timing's not great, but we will have to deal with a few showers and even some afternoon thunderstorms as some moisture begins to pool up ahead of a front that I'm tracking for this weekend. So for Wednesday and Friday, we're going to stay dry Wednesday through Friday. And then here comes the front front uh, approaches on Sunday with some showers and even some thunderstorms. But until then, things are pretty quiet. You can see that on rain tracker through tonight heading into tomorrow. As I mentioned, watch what happens here again. A little blow up of thunderstorms, but that should stay mostly to our west away from uh, the metros here. But we could get clipped in our westernmost neighborhoods with a couple of showers. That would be about it. Wednesday is dry. Thursday is dry as well. And then we'll begin to see the moisture increasing for the latter part of the week and heading into uh, the weekend. So for tomorrow, forecast goes this way. Upper 70s already warm warm start and rain chance is pretty low, but you know, not zero here with temperatures in the mid 80s. That's not the warm up yet. We're going to have to wait until the end of the week, and I don't think any of us are waiting for that. It's just going to be uncomfortably hot with humidity up there. But look at the, the rain chances here dropping to 10% on Wednesday, high pressure overhead. And then for Thursday, Friday, I think I still think we end the week on a quiet side. It's just the temperatures are going to ramp up. And then for the Mother's Day weekend, Saturday rain chances begin beginning to increase with that front approaching. The temperatures are still going to be hot, low 90s, rain coverage at 30%. We'll leave it there on Sunday for Mother's Day. I think early morning or brunch plans are looking still good, but by later in the afternoon, we'll have a few storms popping up and then more unsettled weather for the start of next week. Happening now, America's military sails into Port Miami for the first time. Thousands of sailors pulled into Miami for the start of Fleet Week. The South Florida staple headed south this year, moving from Fort Lauderdale to Miami. CBS News Miami's Terry Hornstein is there for all the action. We're standing right now on the USS baton and just to give you a little bit of some perspective here this ship is 843 feet long but take a look you can see all these armored vehicles there are at least five where I'm, I'm standing and this is just a small part of this ship and this is really what fleet week is all about giving the public a chance to experience what the military do we got picked up from camp lejeune on the 30th and we have been sailing here ever since. Lance Corporal Alexander Peterson works in communications for the Marines. So we do a lot of running around with grunts or, you know, like the people with weapons and stuff when I'm not on the ship. The Lance Corporal and thousands of sailors, Marines and members of the Coast Guard will spend the week in South Florida, meeting with the public, soaking up the sun, and of course, with a little bit of showing off. 
a week of showing the, uh, the capabilities of the uh, maritime forces. The inaugural Fleet Week Miami brings five ships to South Florida. The USS Bataan, the USS Leyte Gulf, USS Normandy, Coast Guard Cutter Seneca, and the USS Harry S. Truman, a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier anchored offshore. I think it's lots of fun. You know, I think it's really like, I think it's going to be a really cool experience. A fun week, but also a meaningful one for these sailors. It's bringing the Navy closer to the people that it serves. It's fostering appreciation and offering a close look at the exceptional work that our military does. You know, the, the whole purpose behind Fleet Weeks throughout the United States is to get this type of connection. And so to pick Miami, a really a, a city that's known for its maritime and its commerce built around the, the sea, for us to come here for the first time is just a tremendous opportunity. And that was CBS News Miami's Terry Hornstein reporting. Former President Donald Trump's hush money trial resumed this morning. The judge held the former president in contempt again. CBS News Miami's Jared Hill reports from New York. Before walking into the courtroom Monday morning, former President Donald Trump railed against the gag order imposed by the judge overseeing his criminal trial in New York. I was in Miami this weekend and reporters are asking me questions, the same questions like you're asking me, and I have to say I have a gang order, I can't speak about it. Never happened before, ever. Inside the courtroom, Judge Juan Rashawn found Trump in contempt once again, this time for comments he made about the jury in an interview last month. The judge fined Trump $1,000, then noted that since the fines don't appear to have an effect, going forward, the former president could risk jail time. Judge Marchand told Mr. Trump, the last thing I want to do is put you in jail. You're a former president of the United States and possibly the next one as well. But Marchand said the gag violations constitute a direct attack on the rule of law, which I cannot allow to continue. The former president maintains he should be able to speak freely. It is unconstitutional and it shouldn't be allowed. And I wish people could move a little bit quicker, the appellate courts, because the whole world is watching this. Trump is charged with falsifying business records in connection with payments his former lawyer, Michael Cohen, paid to adult film star Stormy Daniels ahead of the 2016 presidential election. On the stand Monday, a former controller for the Trump organization, Jeffrey McConney, testified about his role in arranging payments to Cohen, which the prosecution says were reimbursements. Trump denies any wrongdoing. Jared Hill, CBS News, New York. Old foes reunite starting tonight. The Florida Panthers will host Boston and game one. It is all part of their second round Stanley Cup playoff series. The Panthers haven't played a game in a week and that since closing out the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round. Boston comes into tonight's game after an overtime win against Toronto. The puck drops at 8 p.m. in sunrise. When we come back, new developments on the efforts to oust the House Speaker, a live report from Washington, D.C. Hi there, I'm Maribel Rodriguez. Can we get a little personal for a moment? Are you experiencing hot flashes and mood swings? I know I am. Are you? If you are, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but you know what? It's okay. Your sex drive. Yeah. You don't want to have sex. You don't feel like having right. sex. So how do you explain that to your husband? I'm speaking with a couple of women who are sharing how they're coping with the M word. Let's talk menopause tonight at 5.30. Welcome back to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quick Cast. Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene says she will force a vote. It's to oust House Speaker Mike Johnson. Johnson worked with Democrats to pass a foreign aid bill. CBS News Miami Scott McFarlane is live in Washington, D.C. So, Scott, tell us more about the efforts to oust the House Speaker. Good afternoon, Marjorie Taylor Greene, the Georgia Congresswoman, is behind closed doors right now with House Speaker Mike Johnson as she says she's about to pull the trigger politically on this effort to force a vote to oust him. Every indication we're getting as the week begins is she does not have sufficient support among other Republicans to win. That's in part because Democrats have said they'd intervene to save Mike Johnson because they don't want Marjorie Taylor Greene controlling the trajectory of the U.S. House. Here's a clear difference between now and when this last occurred in 2023, when Kevin McCarthy was successfully ousted. The Florida Republicans are not on board. Matt Gates is not championing this idea. The other Florida Republicans who were part or have been critical of leaders in the past are just not right now. This appears to be an errand without a successful endgame.
And we know the Senate is considering an FAA bill that could impact Miami air traveler. Scott, give us the breakdown. You know, typically, these bills are kind of wonky and in the weeds, but bear with me. The Senate must, by law, reauthorize the Federal Aviation Administration. Pretty dense stuff, except there are certain components of this bill which have a real impact on consumers, on flyers. It would put into law a guarantee that if your flight is canceled, flying out of Miami or else otherwise, you get a refund, not just a credit towards a future flight. They're also trying to add language to make it easier to hire air traffic controllers to lighten the schedule, and they even considered raising the retirement age for pilots to make pilots more available. Lots of stuff brewing in the Senate this week that will impact flyers, and we will keep you posted. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Scott reporting live from Washington, D.C. Tonight on CBS News Miami at 5, we are following new developments after being eliminated from the NBA playoffs. We hear from Miami Heat President Pat Ridley. He gives us an update on the state of the team. That is all new tonight at 5. That's your CBS News Miami Quick Cast. I'm Naja Sherman. Stay tuned for more news right here on CBS News Miami and have a wonderful day. Chelsea Jones. And I'm Keith Jones. Coming up tomorrow on CBS News Miami Morning Edition, many dream of retiring early, but as people continue to live longer, it's only getting harder to afford mm. retirement. Yeah, the magic number Floridians should save to enjoy a 30-year retirement tomorrow morning at 6. Hi there, I'm Maribel Rodriguez. Can we get a little personal for a moment? Are you experiencing hot flashes and mood swings? I know I am. Are you? If you are, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but you know what? It's okay. Your sex drive. Yeah. You don't want to have sex. You don't feel like having right. sex. So how do you explain that to your husband? I'm speaking with a couple of women who are sharing how they're coping with the M word. Let's talk menopause tonight at 530.